the, the entire system doesn't have a lot of storage. So essentially, once you release the water from one or two dams, it just flows all the way down. So you've got to organize it in such a way that you can actually capture it. It is also a country which depends heavily on irrigated agriculture. Dryland agriculture, or non-irrigated agriculture as it's called, uh, forms a very small proportion of the area that is irrigated and also of the food contribution to the country. So it's a heavily, heavily dependent country on that irrigated system. So who controls the canals? The, can, the canals themselves and irrigation per se is a provincial issue. So the country has um, four large provinces, uh, varying in size, and they have, and the provincial governments as they are called, run the irrigation departments. Um, then large major in water sector infrastructure is handled by a national institution that really was set up to, for, for, for the construction of the infrastructure, but then has now continued with the organizing of that so that there is, um, there's less political sort of uh, conflict between provinces because they're supposed to take a slightly more um, balanced view that it has to be in the national interest. And how well does that system perform in delivering food security for Pakistan? The productivities are very low, um, and it, you could criticize it in many ways. Uh, the reality is that we've, we've inherited, there's a legacy issue that you have to acknowledge. It's, it's not as simple as just looking at the science. And that is that um, the system, uh, the, the Punjab, for example, which is the largest of the province, has relatively large landmass and very flat. So it's an area that is very easy to irrigate from an engineering perspective. It doesn't take a lot to build a canal in it and that. So there is relatively scarce amount of water for the amount of land that you're trying to irrigate. So as a result of two, two factors, you, you end up with low productivity. And then once we introduced tube well technology and that became indigenized and relatively cheap, people have realized, well, here's another source of water. And so they're extracting that. And that's causing a lot of salinity problems in, in various areas. And then there's the, the perennial problem typical of, of these kind of things of maintenance and all the, you know, it's the, what was described as the build um, and neglect and rebuild uh, vicious cycle. And we don't seem to be able to escape that either in terms of the infrastructure. And now people following the news will have seen, will have associated Pakistan perhaps a lot more with flooding than with drought. Does that flooding have an effect on the system? It, it certainly does. I mean, it comes back to this problem that we have, compared to other large river basins and things, the, the Indus space, we have very little um, storage capacity. What that means is that when you do get a flood, even though you have one large dam, uh, which is Tarbela Dam, you simply have to open the spillways and release the water. You can't afford to lose your dam. Uh, and that means the flood comes all the way down. So there is very little capacity beyond that point of attenuating the flood, of storing the flood and preventing a large flood wave from going down. And then, of course, it affects um, existing infrastructure. Uh, it floods fields, and so you, people lose that season's livelihoods. And if you're in subsistence farming, that, that is very, very serious indeed. So what's the main thrust of our research in Pakistan? What are we trying to understand better? We're, we're really, um, the, the current project, that, which is the one that I lead, is really about trying to improve productivity. Um, so you start with, let's say, water productivity, how much food you grow per unit of water, and then land productivity per, per unit of land, and then livelihood. It's about getting, improving livelihoods so that people are more secure in the food that they have, they have better nutrition, better food, and possibly some surplus um, in what they grow to, to sell onto the market so that then that brings in education and better health care to them. They can afford to buy some of those services. Now that makes it sound terribly straightforward how we're going to solve this problem, but there must be an extremely complex web of social interactions that, that act on all of those processes. You're talking about Pakistan as a country to outsiders, which seems to be totally teetering on the edge of chaos. How are you dealing with the sociopolitical situation in which these uh, that this research is taking place? It is, it is certainly very challenging, um, and, and uh, factoring in those things does take a lot of time. Um, we, we've certainly narrowed it down to certain problems where we feel we can have impact, you know, the, the classic cliche of low-hanging fruit. So, for example, a reform program that started many, many years ago was about bringing on farmers to participate in the irrigation rather than just having a state-run, state institution to do that, because they are major stakeholders and there's stronger incentives for them to see delivery. Um, we're, we're working, for example, at that level of trying to get the farmers strengthening their abilities by innovation of uh, and bringing in new, new ideas and new products and, and taking advantage of new um, technologies, particularly in the ICT area, where it's, of course, now much cheaper to communicate 
over large distances, and Pakistan is a, a fairly well-developed mobile phone network, for example, and um, to see if we can, through the farmers, make those changes, you know, building up the, 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 through the farmer, rather than supporting and building up, necessarily building up the capacity of the irrigation departments. And is there a gender aspect to this work? Um, there certainly is, um, which is rather typical of, of much of the work that we do. Um, we, we certainly are trying to, at the very least, not exclude anybody, um, sort of thing. But it is, it is hugely challenging. Um, it, is, it is, like many places in the world, like, like Pakistan, uh, dominated by men. Uh, and it is very difficult, um, particularly in the much more conservative northern province, northwest province. It is much more difficult to engage women in the, in the things. But we'd like to think that any of the work that we do certainly doesn't exclude or uh, discriminate against them or disadvantage them any further than they already are. We certainly want to do any more damage or, or in, in that way. Mm -hmm.